This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a blossoming new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Summer is coming to an end, and nature is preparing itself for the fall. But before it does, there's one plant we need to tend to. So loosen your neckties and try not to prick your finger, because today, we're talking about Alrone. Now, right off the bat, this is a bit of a peculiar episode for me, because the vast majority of the mythology is essentially something I've already covered on this show. A few years back, I did an episode on Mandrake, which you can watch by clicking that card up there. Careful, there are jump scares. And Alrone is simply a subcategory of Mandrake, which are roots shaped like human beings that became the subject of folklore and legends. Many stories believe that Mandrakes grew from the ground thanks to the spilled blood, or in some cases semen, of men who'd been killed by hanging. Some stories of Alrone say the roots created with hanged men's semen could be used as a potion ingredient by witches in order to impregnate themselves and create soulless children. Overall, the biggest difference between Mandrake and Alrone is the former seems to be more associated with death, while the latter is more associated with sex. Alrone, which is the German word for Mandrake, gained notoriety in a 1911 novel by Hans Heinz Ewers, with Alrone not only being the title of the novel, but the name of the main character. The novel tells the story of a scientist who used the semen spilled by a hanged killer to inseminate a woman, creating a child with no concept of love, instead acting on pure sexuality. Once the young girl, Alrone, learns of her genealogical origins, she seeks revenge on her adoptive father. Due to this novel, as well as the original folklore that inspired it, Alrones are typically portrayed in pop culture as hybrids of beautiful women and plants, rather than just a weirdly humanoid-shaped root that we see more often with the standard mandrake. Part of the mythology behind Alrone claims if you bring one home and take good care of it, she will keep your secrets. Secrets like, hey, I'm having sex with this plant, because I really don't know what other secrets it would have access to. Despite Elrone being a German word, and despite the most well-known story of them being a German novel, many of Elrone's compendium entries in Megami Tensei refer to her as being of Norse descent. This is most likely due to Elrone itself coming from the Norse Ulrun, which is the name of one of the Valkyries. Elrone's compendium entry from Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzanoha vs. King Abaddon, refers to her as a cursed spirit in the form of a beautiful woman, born when the blood of a beheaded man feeds the tree. Originating in Germanic lore, its name translates to Keeper of Secrets. Design-wise, Elrone has had two major depictions in the franchise. Its original Shin Megami Tensei design portrays her as a naked red-headed woman wrapped up in thorny vines with roses growing from it. Like many Kaneko designs, this one has some basis in pop culture, most notably the anime adaptation of the popular manga The Rose of Versailles, which also features a naked character wrapped up in thorns. Elrone's second design, originating in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, keeps many of the same ideas, with a naked red-headed woman themed around thorns and roses, but definitely feels a bit more like a demon, and fits more in line with other depictions of Elrone having the plants be more of a physical part of her body. I'll say flat out that I definitely prefer this version of Alrone personally. The black roses and more blood-colored hair feel more in line with the origins of death and just work better as a demon in my eyes. Alrone also has a devil children design where it's a fat pink root with a flower for a head and red lips. Okay. As far as game history goes, Alrone is one of those demons that doesn't show up a lot, but usually does something interesting when she's there. She's been around since the very first Megami Tensei, and has been peppered throughout the franchise here and there, until she made her 3D model debut in Persona 4. Alrone would later return to the PS2 in Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzanoha vs. King of Baden. She had a small story-related role in the game's tutorial shortly after the first alignment-based question, where Raido is asked if he'd prefer working with a cute lady demon. She appears briefly to help take down Jirogumo alongside Tam Lin, primarily providing support skills during what is arguably the first boss fight. It's a cute little moment for the tutorial, but it'll be a bit before Raido is able to fuse an Alrone of his own. Perhaps her most notable role is in Shin Megami Tensei 4, where she appears as one of the first major boss battles. After kidnapping Navarre, Flynn and the others go to rescue him from her clutches, where she... Mm. 
blood from humans like these is so scrumptious. It has this thick texture that lingers on the tongue. Oh, oh if I drink this much blood, I'll get chubby. Oh well, <laughs> I can always start dieting tomorrow. I have the weirdest boner. One fun note, not specifically related to Alrane, is her original design, the one not featured in Shin Megami Tensei 4, is based on the Rose of Versailles, as I already said. But this series is also the manga that the character Isabeau finds herself enamored with. I thought this was a fun little connection. Speaking of Alrane's Soul Hackers design, it didn't see a 3D model until just recently. So recently, in fact, that this episode got pushed back specifically so I could discuss its 3D debut in Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2. Alrane, as well as other members of the Wood Race, were put into the game just a few weeks back, and all served a minor role in the special faction event, Chop Till You Drop. I don't have much else to add, but it was super cool seeing her pop up here, and I'm definitely hoping we'll see more of this design in future titles. And so there you have it, Alrane, the perverse, peddled, pretty plant playfully preying on particular people. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.